Hi, my name is Baromix, and I'm very glad to welcome you to this first episode of the Maya podcast at creativecow.net. In this series of lessons, I will try to help you understand the wonderful world of Maya. Going to real production examples, we will get a real sense of how to solve specific problems, and then apply that knowledge to your own project. So the main purpose of this podcast is that we learn together sharing the knowledge, sharing ideas, and have a little fun while we're at it. So let's get started. We will start with this logo. I know logos are not that fun and exciting as maybe a monster destroying a city, but hey, doing logos help pay the bills. Besides, look at that. That looks great. And I promise we will do some destruction later. The process is actually very simple. I've done a lot of logos. Let me say that again. A lot of logos. And I have a workflow for making this fast and painless as possible. Uh, it goes something like this. First, we'll trace the logo in a vector editing app like Corel Draw, Freehand, Illustrator, or any other app that we can export to either .eps or .ai format. Sometimes you get the logo already traced. Other times you get a business card, a web page, a plastic bag. Yeah, I've seen it all. If your client is from a well-known brand, you can get a bunch of vector trace logos at www.brandsoftheworld.com. I got the Maya logo from there. So if you want to follow me exactly, get the logo from there. If not, you can also use your own logo or any other logo that you have. Next, import the logo into Maya. It's as easy as dragging and dropping the file inside one of the Maya viewports. If you have a Linux system, you can't do this. So you have to go to File, Import, and select the .eps or .ai file you traced. Now we need to clean it up a little. In my case, I don't need these squares. I only need the Maya logo. Now let's arrange the objects on the scene. First, I'll center the pivot in our logo. As you can see, if you select any of the transform tools, the pivot is at the origin. This is simply fixed by selecting the object first, then going to Modify menu and select Center Pivot. Now we need to center the logo in our scene. Select the Move tool, turn on the Snap to Grid option, now drag the logo from the center of the Move tool and drag it into the scene origin. As you can see, Maya snaps the position of the logo to the corners of the grid. This helps us position the logo right where we need it. Turn off Snap to Grid. You can also use the X key on your keyboard to turn on Snap to Grid. If you press and hold the X key, the Snap Grid option turns on. As soon as you let go, it turns off. This shortcut is very useful. Now we'll move it a little in the Y axis by clicking and dragging in the green arrow of the Move tool. Now we'll upgrade the simple 2D curve into the world of 3D. Okay. This is very simple in Maya. Using the Great Bevel Plus tool, we need to select the curve first and then in the Surfaces section, select Surfaces, Bevel Plus, and hit the Options button to open the Options window for the tools. Here we first need to reset the tool as we might have some last used settings. Select Edit, Reset Settings. This will turn everything to the default state. Now, there's a lot of options here. We'll only use a few. Feel free to explore some other options if you like. You can also check the help for the tool. Maya has a very nice help system. Almost anything has a help option that takes you directly to help specific to that subject or tool. Click Bevel. If your object is not solid and shows in wireframe mode, hit 5 on the keyboard to go into shaded view. Use the number 5 key in your main keyboard, not the one in the numeric pad. As we can see, our logo now has depth. It's now 3D. So that's it. We're done. Not really. 
we need to tweak some options to make it look even better. Fortunately, Maya makes this very easy. With your beveled object selected, press Ctrl A to show the attribute editor. Oh, the attribute editor is my friend. I love it. Select the tab name Bevel Plus 1. Here, we have all the options we saw in the Bevel Plus options window. The cool thing is that now everything we change will reflect in real time in the Maya viewport. Now that's cool. I'll first change the extrude distance as you can see. The depth of the logo updates to reflect the change. I'll use 0 0.4. Next, I'll change the bevel width and depth. I usually like to keep these two attributes the same. I'll set both to 0 0.07. You can use the settings you like. Play a little with the settings. Now, let's modify the bevel style. This is done by clicking the icon at the end of the auto style curve. Click it to open the style options. Select the style from the drop down list. Choose the one you like and that best fits your logo. I select it straight from edge. Click the bevel one tab again. The last option I need to tweak is under Polygon Output Options. Click to expand it. Change the sampling to add divisions to your geometry. This will help make curved parts smoother. Find the right number for you. In my case, 18 works great. You can keep playing with the Bevel Plus options till you get exactly what you need. I like it now, so let's move on. We need two rings now. Create a torus by going to the surfaces shelf and clicking in the torus icon. Select the rotate tool or hit the shortcut key E. Rotate it 90 degrees in X by selecting that red ring and dragging. Rotating the ring at exactly 90 degrees is hard to do like this. To make it exactly 90, just type 90 for rotate X in the channel box. If you can't see the channel box, Press Ctrl A to toggle between the channel box and the attribute editor. Now we need to position and scale the torus. We will do this in the front view. To get to the front viewport, press and hold the spacebar. This will show the Maya hard box, a great tool the new other application has, and that we will cover in detail in future podcasts. Anyway, press and hold the spacebar, left click, and the View Smart menu shows up. Select front view at the bottom. Release the mouse on the spacebar. Press A to fit all objects in the scene. Zoom out a little if you are too close. Press Alt, right click and drag to zoom out. Alt, middle click button, drag to pan. And Alt, left click and drag to orbit. Orbit only works on the perspective views. Select the torus and position it in the middle of the logo. Hit R for the scale tool or select the tool in the tools box. Then scale it. We need to display the options for the torus. For this we'll need again our friend the attribute editor. So press Ctrl A to show it. Select the tab name Make Nerves Torus 1. We will modify the height ratio. I'll use 0.05. We also need to add some more sections. 3 2 works nice for me. Finish positioning the torus so it fits a bit better. That will make our first ring. To make the inner ring, we'll duplicate this torus and make its height ratio a bit smaller. To duplicate it, hit Ctrl D or go to the Edit menu and select Duplicate. You can see the shortcut there. This will make a duplicate in the same place as the original and select the duplicated torus. We actually need to modify the original torus since the duplicate loses the creation options. To easily select the original, I'll introduce you to another friend, the Mighty Outliner. I'm spending too much time in Maya, yeah I know. To open the Outliner, go to Window Outliner. Here you can see an outline of your scene. You get your cameras used for the viewports, the curve for the logo, and the geometry of the logo and the two torus objects also some default sets. Select the first torus named NURBS TORUS 1 and as you can see it also selects it in the scene. Scale the torus with a scale tool. Press R, 
click and drag in the small yellow square in the middle to scale the torus in all three axes. Now in the attribute editor again, reduce the height ratio a little. I use 0.025. That's it for modeling. Press and hold the spacebar, left click and select perspective view to go back to your perspective view. Now is a good time to save. I'm saving all the time and I save a new version anytime I'm gonna do big modifications to my scene. First let's add a prod. I guess we should have done this in the beginning but now is a good time also. Go to the file menu, project, new and the new project option shows up. First select the location for the project, type a nice descriptive name. Maya will create a main folder in that location with that name. Inside the main folder, Maya will create folders to house all of the project assets like textures, render images, mail scripts, scene, etc. Click the use defaults button to populate the folder names. You can customize the folder names, but I highly recommend that you use the defaults unless you really need to. Now, click accept to create your project. Now save the scene, select file, save scene, select the name for your scene and I do recommend that you choose a nice descriptive name again. Don't be afraid to have long names, that can actually help later to describe what exactly that scene file contains. I'll type my name first so everybody knows who did this, the scene name and a version control number. Click save. Okay guys, uh, this, this concludes part one, which covered all the modeling of our logo. Uh, w this will continue in part two, we'll, we'll be doing all the shading, lighting and rendering. Okay, see you in part two. Again, this is BetterMix for the creativecow.net.